everyone it's happening I am painting again today so I want to paint large I haven't painted in ages I'm not gonna warm up or anything but what I do want to uh, do today is kind of take this opportunity and while I'm painting talk about uh, mistakes that I often see and have done <laughs> plenty of times when painting um, I guess I'll mostly be talking about florals but it's kind of true for a lot of other subjects so this is one of the florals that I paint actually I think it's the only one that I paint in uh, intuitive watercolors the classroom if it's not already kind of filled with all the new content, it's coming very, very soon and I'm very excited about it. If you're not there yet, then please join us. So I'm going to use today this relatively inexpensive paper by Canson. This is 100% cellulose paper, it's not cotton, but for my style, it works pretty well. My favorite is the Cornwall, and I think I have to replenish my stash. I think I just have less than one block, which is very, very low in my world. So you can see it, um, this paper, the Canson Montval. I like the 300 GSM. The 200 is just too thin for my uh, preference, but you can see that the granulation of granulating colors shows really, really nicely on this paper and the colors are uh, bright so it works for me now let's start uh, this is pretty big how big are you 40 by 50 centimeters so almost 16 inches by almost 20 inches and I am going to paint a floral because that's what I love painting the most and after not having painted for a long time I really need something that feels really um, easygoing and fun. I'm going to start the way that I always do with some with some sketchy lines. Now the first thing I want to talk about is composition. I see I'm just gonna start uh, kind of painting or, this is not painting this is sketching with a neo color one in white so um, I have painted a lot a lot of florals and I think once you start kind of being drawn to the world of loose florals very uh, you know almost well, they don't have to be abstract. It really depends on where you fall on that scale. I mean, you have wonderful artists like Jean Haynes, for example, that when you look at her, at her work, it looks at her, especially florals, it looks very, very loose and um, kind of free and wild. But then there are areas that are very detailed. And, you know, that contrast is one of the things that make uh, her artwork so interesting and uh, I really find that composition is sometimes uh, problematic especially if you are not doing the you know a bouquet of flowers in a vase or um, like a, a plant where you can see exactly the stalks I think it kind of needs work and what I see a lot of times is, is things I've done also myself is the floating flowers which I just think sometimes it, it just looks very kind of static and disconnected from the the painting so what Jean Haynes does for example is that she will leave a lot of kind of loose um, borders so not every flower has all of the you know lines around it super super defined from the background and that kind of allows them to uh, blend a little bit with the background and kind of make it feel like a, a complete finished piece as opposed to just like flowers like stuck on a different piece of paper. What I like to do is I go really big and that to me kind of 
takes me more into that abstract world because I don't do a lot of you know leaves and stalks I do mostly expressive brush strokes so I really like to go kind of off page and so I'm not going to have like three flowers that are all well defined but you know this one is almost on the edge and this one goes over the edge what I also am trying to now fix <laughs> I did this without you can't really see so I'm going to switch to a different uh, color is that this flower wait let's, ah, let's try I'll grab this pencil which I really really like this is Derwent Lightfast turquoise green now there's another one yeah this one is nice also light aqua you can see that I've already loved it uh, but I'll use this so you can see so the problem is I made here these three shapes and the center of them which I scribbled more with white so this is like one shape and then I have here another one and then the third one is here still not sure <laughs> that it shows maybe now a little bit but the point is that kind of the center of this floral is somewhere here and then this one I also drew it here and that's a straight line and you don't want that so I'm going to shift I'm going to kind of work a little bit more here now the logic of using this particular color besides the fact that I really love it is that I know I'm going to use a lot of kind of corally orangey pinky shades in my florals and as you can see by my handy dandy color wheel um, I would say this color falls somewhere here so in the green blue green zone and the complementary color to that is here so somewhere between pink red and orange red which are exactly the colors that I want to use for my florals so I'm going with complementary colors because I love how they make each other pop this is a, a pencil that is not water soluble so it's going to resist the watercolor and really help things um, look interesting so I have here kind of the center of this floral here the center of this floral and then this one I'm going to shift it from here to um, the side and I'm also trying to create movement so this is another really important thing to have uh, a dynamic composition and it's just all these little things together this is the beginning this is just like the composition all these things together are going to help the finished painting look uh, more interesting so what I want to do is I'll go back to ochre so this is a neo color one it's a wax pastel that is water uh, resistant again it's going to resist just like the white which I love how the white resists the watercolor so composition is the first thing that really um, can make or break a painting and you can this is one of the decisions that you probably make earlier on in your process so I would say spend some time and find a composition that is interesting because it'll really help the painting work so now let's move on to color okay one of the main main uh, issues that I see with people's uh, paintings and also mine um, sometimes and definitely a lot when I started uh, painting florals or loose florals is the heavy use of mid values so just having a lot of real estate on your painting occupied by mid values and what happens is at the end you have a very kind of intense looking painting without variation in values and that's just the the overall effect I think is less appealing so what I do to avoid that is I start 
with a lighter application of color and I try to vary it as I go. So let us let me just show you what I mean. I'm just thinking which colors, which pink I'm in the mood for today. I think it's gonna be bright rose. So I'm starting with a mix of Naples Yellow Red by Lucas and Holbein Bright Rose. And the these layers tend to be more watery and you can see also as I'm applying them I already have some variation of color so it's I find it really not appealing when I see now this is just me right it's not just because I say something doesn't look good to me doesn't mean that you're not going to like it but let me just take a color for example this is carmine so when I see a flower that it's all the same value it's all the same color and then I have a few of these and they are not touching each other they're not overlapping they're just like floating in on the page first of all it's just to me it's less interesting it's kind of like a missed opportunity and you know you can do like lines here but the point is that what you have is very intense mid value no variation and Later, you try to add more contrast to make things more interesting, to add darker values, and it just starts to look overworked. So for me, the my strategy of avoiding it is to start with lighter layers and as I go, create color variety and also value variety. So some areas will be more intense and I know already that I'm going to go back with a second and maybe a third layer and intensify the color in some areas. So you can see I'm starting and I'm really using my brush to get a really lovely variation of color and or also brush strokes to get some texture. Watercolor can be really flat and doing all of these things together like brush strokes for me it's using the pencils and the pastels gives me those added details that compensate for the lack of you know actual texture so you can drop in some more intense color here but um, it's also just uh, the first layer is just kind of color placement and starting to build the intensity and I won't be covering all of this up and I won't be um, intensifying everything that's the point that every layer adds more intensity to smaller and smaller areas of your painting I'm going to use that carmine why not So this is already, for me, a much more interesting foundation of these flowers. Instead of just like coloring in the entire area with uh, a color that might look very, you know, flat because it's all the same. And whereas here, that's why I also like to work with two colors starting. And this is something that I, I don't want to like pat myself on the shoulder or anything, but this is something that I really uh, figured out works for me because starting with two colors and then playing with the their different ratios so that I create can create kind of, um, you know, slightly more orangey tones and then slightly more pinkish tones even right when I'm starting, that already gives me interest, that already gives me variation. 
and um, later I can build on that. So for example, in this area, I might go back and intensify this with more yellow or more orange. And then in the areas around, I will go with more pink, but it all creates uh, some sort of variation that is just less boring. And for me, I, I don't feel like I have to then, you know, work so hard to add detail um, because everything that I do is already with that thought in mind that I need to make every layer as interesting as possible. Of course, I have like different limitations, but, but it's a really great uh, foundation. And again, I can go back. The point here is variety. And another thing you really want, if you're painting florals, you want to make sure that each flower is different. Different in the, the angle of it, in the placement, different in the level of detail. So, you know, choose one flower that will have a lot more detail than the other one that will have a bit less detail. And then a third one, or if you're doing five, um, usually uh, uneven numbers work better. Uh, it just looks better, it seems. So, and you can decide this pretty early on in your paintings. I mean, for me, let's take a look at this one. Um, the composition here is not perfect. I also talk about this in the class. These two flowers I feel are way too um, straight. I wish that this one was more to this side or this one was more to this side, but that's how it turned out. Um, but you can see that there's like just different sizes here and you can see that this flower has kind of the lines more pointing in this direction and here they're going this way. So there's a variety here. It probably could be better, but um, it's still there. They don't all look the same, like copies of the same uh, flower that I did again and again. So I could add more now, or I could kind of just leave it alone and see how things um, look. What I want to start uh, working on is the background. And again, in the background, it's not going to be just one block of color. I'm going to create probably, you know, two or three layers and then have some areas that are quite uh, simple and then other areas that have more detail. But the color I want to choose for the background, I've done a lot of moon glow and a lot of dusk yellow. I'm thinking maybe today I'm in the cascade green mood, but I'm going to um, mix it with some of the pink. You can see that in my palette, so it immediately neutralizes. This is cascade green pure, and then this is mixed with a bit of carmine. You can see how it immediately neutralizes it because pink and green are complementary colors. And this is how I'm going to introduce this color to my painting. And I'm using the whole length of my bristles. It gives me just really lovely, very subtle texture, but that's what I want. Again, we're working with a very flat medium and I'm going to use every, every tool in my toolbox to uh, make it more interesting. So my wash, I keep tweaking it so that I have different tones. You can see here it's a little bit warmer and here I'm going to make it a little bit um, cooler with the green. Again, this is a really subtle way to create an interesting um, foundation for what we can add later. Later, I'll probably come in at some point with the pure cascade green and it will look harmonious because it's already there. 
So instead of, you know, using a gray for my background and then coming in with the green, I'm using the colors that I already have and the green that I want to add later to uh, mix my neutrals. And that is something I do all the time. And for now, you can see the values are pretty light. That's how I like to work. This is a little bit darker now. Um, I prefer to start with lighter values and this helps me not get to that, you know, painting that is full of mid values. I think for me, an appealing painting has a lot of lighter values, some mid values, and a little bit of dark values. That's the kind of aesthetic that I'm drawn to, and that's how I bring it into my own artwork. So I start light, and then I build up if I feel the need to it. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here, and I think I'll let this dry, and I think this will be kind of the first video in a series, and in the next one, we can talk about the second layer, and um, adding details in a way that doesn't overworks the painting, which is another very big challenge when you're working in such a kind of loose, light manner. Uh, the one thing that if you're kind of following along or painting like this, uh, and if you're going to stop now, is to remember which colors you used. Uh, personally, I'm loving what's going on in my palette. Uh, this is only four colors. I have here Naples yellow red mixed with bright rose and uh, here there's some carmine and then there's cascade green, which is a separating granulating color and you can see all the different tones that I have. I really love working like this and having my palette just be one big mixing area. Um, you don't need this palette, although I highly, highly recommend it, and you can find it in my shop. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. But um, you can also use something like a butcher tray, which you can probably find on Amazon. This is a huge one. You can find smaller ones. Or just get a, a plate, a white plate. Uh, that would work. That would work as well. And yeah, so remember which colors you used so that we can use those. We might add uh, more colors because probably if we add more, it'll be to add darker values. Uh, Cascade Green and Bright Rose are actually pretty dark. And I'll show you. That's the nice thing about using darker colors. Um, you can you know, very easily lighten them with water or white if you enjoy it. But then when you when it's time to add darker colors to your paintings, you don't need to bring in a new color. So this is Cascade Green. You can see it can uh, be very, very dark. And then we can water it down. So it's a pretty dark color. And then Bright Rose is can also be pretty dark. And if we mix them, we can get really pretty uh, kind of muted violet colors because both of these, the screen has a lot of blue in it and Bright Rose is a very bluish pink. So the mixtures are not going to completely neutralize each other unless I decide to add some of the Naples yellow red, which um, will eventually neutralize it. But uh, just these two will give me kind of purpley shades, which uh, can be really beautiful and might be useful in adding shadows. And then um, Carmine is also a pretty, pretty dark color. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll add uh, another color like Moon Glow or uh, Zoazite, that's a good option, or uh, Bloodstone, that's another good option. Or dusk pink, or dusk yellow, I mean, because I really love dusk yellow. Okay, so that's it. I hope you find this useful, and I'll see you soon in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.